Hi and welcome to Hedgehog Hollow and welcome to my studio. So many of you have asked me to share a studio tour of the space that I create all my videos in. I've decided to split it into three key areas uh, which out works out really nicely with the way that this room is arranged. So today we'll be looking at my photography area, my general storage, paper storage and my die storage. And then tomorrow we'll move on to my back wall that you always see behind me in my videos. And then we'll move on to my desk area in part three and some of my ink storage and my general accessories. So behind me you can see the photography area. I've been asked to give you a disclosure that this is not our best lighting setup, but as we want to show you our lighting, we needed to have it in shot, which we wouldn't normally do. This is a lighting set we got on Amazon for $50 and it was probably the best investment we ever had. It contains three lamps, tripods for them, reflectors, all, all the key things that you really need in a lighting setup. Now we did do an entire blog post on this photography setup, so I'll link to that in the blog post that's hyperlinked underneath this video. So be sure to check that out if you want more details on our photography setup, what cameras we use, the lighting, and all the other details. So let's move on to my general storage and you can see where I keep my paper, my stamps, and my favorite envelope storage. So this is my general storage unit. This is a Calyx, or as we used to know them in an Expedit from Ikea. And I've linked them up in the blog post that you can see below in the description so that you can see some of the different configurations that they come in. This is the four x four, which is one of the larger sizes, but it suits me just fine. And I have it sitting on three filing cabinets, which I'll show you later. So it is still a work in progress and it's a little bit of a dumping ground in places, but there are some parts of it that I'm really happy with. So first of all, I love that I can keep my 12 by 12 albums and my 12 by 12 paper over here in it as well. The other thing that I like are these uh, fridge bins, which again, I've linked up in the blog post. And this is my stamp storage. So I buy some inexpensive cardstock uh, from Joann's or Hobby Lobby. I have it cut down at the Kinko's store into the sizes of these envelopes, which again, I'll put online. Inside there, I put my stamps. I put a lovely label on the top here. I've recently found out you can get pink and white labels. So we will be having a phase transition into those. And then I have some magnet sheets that I cut up to keep the appropriate dies in the back if they match the stamp set. So I'll link all of that up in the blog post so you can read in more detail exactly how that system works. The taller ones I keep stuck this way and everything else I can keep stuck just like this. This is my older retired Christmas and I have it done by brand uh, within Christmas stamps at the moment. My current stamps you may have seen I also keep on my desk and I have another one here if I've already used it in a blog post. This is my envelope storage. Many of you will have seen a previous video where I linked this up for you. It's one of my favorite areas, I can just pull it out. I keep my postage stamps in a nice one of these same envelopes I keep my stamps in. I have this lovely little washi tape holder uh, I keep some pens in the front, lots of envelopes and some card bases as well. So again, be sure to check out the blog to see that linked up as well. We also have Colin, one of our resident hedgehogs, along with Mr. Prickle who I knitted and we have Spike, Lubu and Chew who you often see cropping up in videos. The other thing I wanted to show you is just at the back here. This is what I have done at the FedEx store. So I buy my cardstock in um, reams of Nina, solar white and of the desert sand and then I take it to Kinko's and I have it cut. So you can see here these are cut in half widthways. I also have it cut in half lengthways in other boxes and I have some cut into quarters as well just for card front sizes. It costs about two bucks fifty for every cut and it's really inexpensive and great way to have your cardstock cut in bulk and really accurately. Plus they come in these great boxes for storage. In the bottom here, I keep knitting patterns and some of my university books. And at the moment, I'm waiting for my filing cabinet to arrive. So all our filing and important paperwork is just kept in this cube. But at least I know where it is. Now we can move over to my die cutting station and my new die storage, which I'm completely in love with. So this is my die cutting area. And some of you saw this on my Facebook Lives. And I haven't really changed it because it seems to be working pretty well. So I repurposed Tilly's changing table and I'll link to the exact Ikea one. I think it's about $35. This is my Big Shop Pro, which I still use occasionally, even though I have my Vagabond. Uh, it's great to cut multiple things when you're doing uh, lots of cards. It's great for larger projects as well. And I've got some of the really big nestabilities that will only cut on this size of machine. 
In here I keep, uh, these are art bin magnetic sheets. I'll link up to these, I really like them. I don't recommend the case that they come in uh, as it's a little bit cumbersome and it gets really heavy. But I put them in one of these Curva uh, wicker style tubs that you can also get in Target. Um, but I'll link up to the ones that I have and you can uh, decide how to do your own. Ideally, I'd like to upgrade to some of the stamp and storage magnetic sheets, but they're quite expensive compared to these. And as I already have them, I'm quite happy dealing with it for the moment. Underneath here, I stack up some of these Sizex boxes that house the big styes and some of my thinlets. Now, these are old Stampin' Up! ones uh, in the dark brown, but Sizex do still sell them. So I'll link you up to the exact ones that I have so that if you're interested in some big storage or just ways to store some of your larger dies, you can use this method too. Now behind me is my best find at Hobby Lobby. And I shared lots of pictures on our Facebook page when I first got this. Now I have since uh, refined it slightly. So I now have a My Favourite Things section, a waffle flower, there's gonna be a lawn fawn. These are some of my big styes that I'm still blogging with. And there's some of the really thick 3D uh, textured impressions in here as well. Down here, this bin is all full of my movers and shakers. There's some stamping up and there's still some dies that I need to sort through. The majority of my dies, if they don't coordinate with a stamp set, I use the same magnetic sheets that I use in the stamp storage you saw previously and the same um, little plastic folders and I just label them up in exactly the same way. And I just do it here by brand because that's what works for my blog. Now, finally, I'm gonna show you my paper storage and you can see how I store my eight and a half by 11 and A4 paper sheets. So these are the drawers that I have underneath my Calyx unit. Each of them is exactly the same, except uh, the end one has Stampin' Up! retired and the middle one has non-Stampin' Up! papers, but they're all organized in this way and they have been for the past two or three years. So I'm more than happy to recommend this solution to you. This one is neutrals, subtles, brights, and there was a Regals tab, but Tilly seems to have wandered off with it. However, I keep each alternating set uh, on either side of the tabs so that I also can find them at quick glance. At the front here, I keep in colors, and normally I update these, but I didn't because we were moving uh, last year. So they have a set of in colors at the front. I also keep anything else that's in an eight and a half by 11 in a speciality paper. So we have some shimmery white here at the front, some mulberry paper that I still occasionally use, and this was some gold glimmer that used to come in the eight and a half by 11. I also keep new packs of cardstock in the front here so that I can just open them when I'm ready. And I also have some odd sheets of older colors that I might grab for fairly regularly. So this is how I keep most of my cardstock uh, that is non 12 by 12 organized. And I will link up the exact file folders I use because these have lasted for a good few years and they seem to be holding up. And these tabs are brilliant as well. So thanks so much for joining us for part one of our studio tour. You can see in the background behind me how that wall all comes together. You've got my photography studio on this side, you've got the expedits with the mounds underneath and you have my die cutting area to the side there as well. Now I hope you've really seen some helpful tips and tricks for storage and some ideas that you can put into your crafty space no matter what size it is. Make sure to also visit the linked up blog post, which is hyperlinked in the description, which will run along the bottom here. There I'll link up all the products you've seen and also some uh, in-depth pictures and refer you to other posts where I've looked at some of these items too. So thanks for stopping by for part one and join us again tomorrow for part two of our studio tour here at Hedgehog Hollow.